Imagine not being able to control your own body's movements and actions. Tourette syndrome is a neurological disorder involving repetitive and unnecessary sounds and movements. Although there is still more to discover, it is estimated that one of every 360 young adults have received a diagnosis and are affected by the condition. One in particular being a high school student. 15-year-old Cruz Turner hasn't been able to control what he does or says for the majority of his life. I was diagnosed with Tourette's when I was about six years old, um, and I had a really rough year for um, a while after that. But then as I got into elementary school, uh, they started to kind of calm down a little bit. And then up until middle school, where everything just exploded, my tics were exacerbated tenfold out of nowhere. And I had to get pulled out of school. I was enrolled in a home school. And uh, it was it was it was pretty rough for me because I you know I was pulled away from all my friends who were all still still at school you know hanging out and I was at home ticking away it was yeah it was it was not fun looking back he definitely had signs of um kind of a neurodivergent brain um, before that. His was actually easy in the sense that um, it, it appeared overnight. I mean, he woke up one morning, we were at um, SeaWorld down in San Diego, and he couldn't walk. He literally would take a step, and then he would have to do a, a complex sequence of ticks. So there was no question that something major had, had you know, that it was like flipping a switch. That was when he was six years Old. Can you describe your tics? Do you have vocal, motor, or maybe both? Um, I have I have both. Uh, I mainly one of my main ones is I make this weird noise with my throat, so, <laughs> uh, and I also have one where I throw my my neck back like that, and um, I also have a blinking one where I'll blink really really hard, and that that one like my eyes will dry out and then they'll get all irritated, and. <laughs> I also have some when I get super nervous and stressed where I'll hit myself and that one, re that one really hurts. And I, I think one of the reasons my tics have been so, so, uh, so low is because we haven't been going out in public and so I haven't had that stress of people constantly watching me and, you know, maybe laughing. Is there anything that you've noticed you can't really do other than someone maybe without tricks can do because of your tics? Uh, well, can't play hide and seek, <laughs> but <laughs> other than that, uh, no, it doesn't really stop me from doing anything. What is it like being in public with ticks? Like, how do people react? People normally just kind of leave me alone, you know, they, they mind their own business because they can, they can see that clearly, you know, something, something's up with me. But I've had a few instances where people will kind of stare like rudely or laugh at me even sometimes, but uh, other than that, I haven't really had any problems. And <laughs> and uh, standing out really really hasn't been a problem with me. I've always kind of I've I don't mind standing out really. Kind of I kind of like it. I don't like to fit in. If that makes sense. <laughs> Cruz's um, personality is that, you know, even if it did cause him anxiety to go out, he would still rather go out and, you know, just live his life. And if he's, if he's ticking terribly and people are looking at him, he usually takes it as an opportunity to try to talk to them. You know, if he sees people with questions, questions in their eyes, he'll walk up to them and say, hey, are you wondering why I'm, why I'm doing this? So for the most part, people are extremely um, patient and kind. Uh, we, you know, we've had a we've had a couple of experiences with with teenagers who made rude comments and things like that. But the vast majority of people recognize that something is going on. That he's not voluntarily shouting. He's not voluntarily um, hitting me. You know, because that's that was one of his tics for a long time was kind of punching me. Um, but people could see that it was involuntary behavior, and people I think are are generally um, more educated now than they used to be and they would usually just give you a smile kind of an encouraging you know hang in there type type look now I know that you've traveled to Georgia to go to camps um, for those who have Tourette's what was that experience like that was probably like one of the best experiences of my life so far because um, 
at, at the time that I went, it was really kind of when my tick started to get really bad again. So I was kind of a little insecure about it at that time. Um, so going to this camp and seeing all these kids there and getting to know them and know like how they feel about it and get and I got to see that like they were all comfortable and it kind of taught me that it's okay it's nothing to be ashamed of so it's uh, it's called Camp Twitch and Shout and it's it's mainly a camp that you go to just to kind of just have fun I guess um, we we they had a big like they had a swimming pool so we would go swim um, they had also had like a lake and you go paddleboard and just just kind of normal summer camp stuff. I know that when people with Tourette's are around each other, sometimes they can trigger each other's tics. So what was that like at camp? Oh man, it was, if, if you take a large group of kids with Tourette's and put them in a small camp, you're going to get chaos. It was, it was, it was, it was crazy because yeah, everyone was picking up on ticks. Like you'd hear this one, one person all the way across the room, maybe yell biscuit. And then it just echoes biscuit, 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 biscuit. Cause we pick up on it. it it's really weird, but it, it was, it was funny. It was fun. Um, well, when he, so when I dropped him off at the, the special Tourette camp out in Georgia, um, I wasn't allowed to have any contact with him while he was there. So I basically handed him over to these, this just wonderful loving staff. And I had to, it was the first time I'd been away from him since it had been really bad as a teenager. And I had to hand him over to the staff and walk away. And I didn't get to have any contact for five days, I think it was. And when I picked him up and all of these kids were pouring into the auditorium and the song, um, I think it was This Is Me, was playing. And those kids were all, I mean, you could just see the happiness on their faces. They all felt um, comfortable. They didn't have to be ashamed. They uh, just were really enjoying their time being with other people who understood what they were going through. And I just bawled like a baby because as a, as a parent, that's all you want is for your kid to feel accepted and loved and comfortable. Um, so that was a really great experience. And then... Is there anything else you do to calm your tick? I play guitar. That's, that's really my main... Um, other, than, other than the medication, that's my main source uh, that I use to calm down. Playing guitar isn't the only thing that helps Cruz with his tics. He's been taking CBD oil for over a year. Uh, for me, most medications don't really do anything. However, uh, I have uh, my grandfather is a retired physician, and he did some research for me and found that people uh, with Tourette syndrome and OCD have had success using CBD, CBD pills, and CBD oil. So um, we looked. He looked into that, and uh, we decided that we, we would give it a shot, and we did, and it worked. It helped calm my tics, and it was worth wonders. Well, I'm Andrew Wirtz. I am Cruz's grandfather. I am a retired physician. Uh, by training, I was a neonatologist. That's a pediatrician who took care of newborn infants who were in distress, sick, premature. Uh, but I did have experience doing pediatrics prior to neonatology. Uh, and as a result, um, Tourette's, of course, is in the bailiwick of pediatrics because it starts at a young age. Um, it's a collection of symptoms that don't necessarily reflect disease, um, but presents with a pattern that can be stereotyped, uh, and as a result, comes under the name of Tourette's. Um, the, the interesting thing about Tourette's is that these are otherwise normal people with behaviors that uh, set them apart, uh, that they can't control. And uh, although there are some associated symptoms with Tourette's, like um, obsessive compulsive neurotic behaviors, um, that uh, those are the symptoms that are usually treated. Um, the interesting thing about Tourette's is that the process of the tics waxes and wanes. Uh, generally, uh, as one gets older, they tend to lessen. But oftentimes, after going through adolescence, many adults who had Tourette's as children will start ticking again. There are many medications and temporary treatments that uh, people with Tourette's can take to kind of 
calm their tics or you know do certain things to help them what is the research kind of going on behind those treatments research is expensive and uh, to come to a a cure a medication or such oftentimes takes billions of dollars and since most people with Tourette's are functional uh, you're not going to see that kind of research being done there uh, is some interesting research being done with respect to the gut biome, which is a collection of the bacteria, fungi, and everything that live in our gut. We are now finding out in many, many ways that um, the gut biome affects and influences our behavior and our disease processes, particularly as we get older. And there is some research being done with Tourette's that uh, if one modifies the intestinal biome with probiotics, uh, targeted probiotics, one can modify the behavior. What do you think is the best kind of way to go with that? The standard treatments, if you were to go to a neurologist, a child neurologist, would be anti-anxiety, um, antidepressive medications, which really helps with the compulsivity and the anxiety aspects, but not so much with the ticking, uh, with the hopes that by cutting down on the depression and the uh, anxiety that the ticks will decrease. Um, with respect to Cruz, for instance, um, I happened to be talking with a physician colleague of mine who was an emergency room doctor, uh, and I happened to mention that Cruz had Tourette's. And he said, oh, I have a doctor friend whose son had Tourette's. And he had to do his own research, delved in, and he put his son on CBD, and it basically took care of the problem. And I said, well, get me the name of the medication, and uh, we'll try it with Cruz. I did some more research, and um, I discovered that there is some work that had been done in China, not here in the United States, but in China, looking at the gut biome. And uh, the Chinese found that uh, the gut biome of kids with severe Tourette's is different from people who do not have Tourette's. Uh, and they modified it using probiotics. So um, we used a two-pronged approach with Cruz, uh, putting him on CBD oil and probiotic. And I believe from what I have seen in my observations of him, that it made a dramatic improvement uh, and that his ticking, which at some point um, uh, earlier on uh, had been where he needed a wheelchair to get around, he was having so many episodes, that all went away. Because of the CBD oil, Cruz is finally gaining back some control. Now, when that topic was raised with a another neurology specialist to, to whom he was referred, um, the specialist uh, conveyed to my daughter that uh, they don't use it, but it's worth trying. Meaning there is a standard in the medical industry that uh, you don't want to breach um, because of taboo of the concept of CBD oil and its relationship to THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the active ingredient in marijuana that causes the highs. And CBD has nothing to do with the active ingredient THC. You can take it as an oil. Uh, you take it orally uh, by putting it in your mouth or in a drink, uh, or you can take it with capsules or tablets. Uh, and it is manufactured now uh, and it is finding many, many uses in a lot of disease processes. Um, and I think particularly in uh, Tourette's, uh, many people who had Tourette's who have taken it seem to show improvement. But there has been no significant medical research uh, to make it peer reviewed, that is other physicians have reviewed it, who have experience and say, yep, this is something we should use, that it is safe, that is efficacious or effective, uh, and that uh, we can use it. That's the problem. We haven't proved safety and efficacy uh, in a large group of, of uh, people with Tourette's 
uh, to be able to make that a public uh, declaration. So what is something that can often be misleading or misunderstood uh, about Tourette's? I think many people who have no history or uh, knowledge of the symptoms uh, believe that it's totally controllable and the behavior is way out of touch with what is normal. And as a result, it's um, looked, looked down upon when in fact um, it's not that controllable. Most kids I think have heard about it but don't really know anything about it, um, especially because it's such a misunderstood condition. So a lot of the kids kind of thought it just, uh, I cursed a lot, which definitely was not, I did curse for, for the most part, I didn't do that. So they were kind of like, when I told them, they're like, oh, so you, you know, you curse and you flip people off and all that. And then, no, I, I don't really do that. So I had to, I had to explain that to them. But, you know, there are people who do experience that with Tourette syndrome, but um, it's not a very large uh, portion. It's it's actually a minority, and there's so much more to Tourette syndrome than what you know what you see on TV. It's such a misunderstood condition, and uh, it definitely definitely needs to be um, you know needs to be taught to people because uh, they. They don't really. They don't really understand because a lot of people, you know, it's it's such a stigmatized condition too, whereas everyone thinks it's uh, you know cursing and flipping people off because that's what you know people see in the media. It's it's rarely ever shown in in the media, but when it is, that's really what that's what they focus on is the. Um, cursing and all the all the really bad stuff for any parent that has a child ticking um, the way that Cruz did at, at the height of his of his ticks uh, your biggest con my biggest concern was that he would never be able to live a quote-unquote normal life that it would you know drastically impact his his daily daily living, his ability to get a job, his ability to um, have a marriage and family and kids and uh, you know you always think of the kind of one of the worst case scenarios and that's what goes through your mind as a parent. Raising awareness became a priority for Cruz as he became a Tourette's advocate and youth ambassador at the age of 14. Now I understand you went on a trip to Washington DC to meet with Congress. What was that experience like and how did that come about? Uh, so it came about when uh, some people at our local Tourette's meeting that I go to kind of mentioned it, that, that there's this uh, program called the Youth Ambassador Program where they have um, young kids go out to Washington, D.C. and train for a little less than a week. Um, and then they go, they go up to Capitol Hill and then they talk to uh, Congress people and and uh, they kind of they talk to him about uh, fundraising and raising awareness and you know things like that. And at first, I was really like not sure I wanted to do that because I was like, no way, I do not want to go out there. But then um, my mom kind of talked me into it, and she was like, it'd be a great way to raise awareness. And so it's like, okay, I'll try it. The Youth Ambassador Program has had a purpose to spread tolerance of an understanding about Tourette's since being established in 2005. The teen leaders and advocates undergo a two-day training process to prepare for an exceptional meeting with elected officials. I flew out to DC and I, you know, I did the training and, and yeah, it was, it was nerve wracking though, having to talk to them, having to talk to, you know, these people with in a position of power and but I did it and it felt really good watching him as a youth ambassador going to DC was I mean it was incredible I was so proud of him um, going in and speaking to you know all of the congressmen it's 
it's just hard to describe. Uh, you know, he was so nervous. And I remember after we met with the first congressperson, he came out and he said, Mom, I did it. I can totally do this. This is great. I want to do this every year. I, I, this is awesome. And he just loved it. And it was, it was like watching him blossom. It was pretty amazing. What kind of message do you want to share with other teens with Tourette's? Um, just don't, don't hide it. Don't be ashamed of it. Just kind of accept it because we're just, we're normal people who happen to do and say things that we can't control. And yeah. You know, being a board member, I have a lot of opportunities to educate parents and, um, and youth alike. And for me, one of the, one of the things that the things that is closest to my heart is making sure that parents understand that it's going to be okay. It's not a death sentence. It's not. Um, it doesn't mean that that your child's life is over. And you know, as parents, our kids look to us to see how we handle things. And you know, if we are ashamed or if we feel that our child um, is should be embarrassed by their tics, the the, the kids feel that. And and so for me, it's really important to educate parents that there is nothing to be ashamed of. It is, it's totally involuntary. It is a medical condition. It is not a behavioral issue. And so I just, I really, um, I really value uh, the opportunity to talk to parents and make sure that they understand that so that that trickles down to their kids. What do you hope people will take from this while learning about your life and what you go through? Um, I hope people will learn to just accept, you know, people with Tourette syndrome for who they are, you know. Sure, Tourette's is, it's like a part of them, but it's not the only part of them. They're also humans. They have emotions and personalities, and so I hope that people focus more on that than just the Tourette's, because it's who I am.